بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. And in 1997, opened up Fonz Tai uh, in order to continue publishing. So I kept on going with Ghazali. And then、uh, I decided to try to read some of the books I publish. So I picked up Abdul Hakim's Death and What Comes After. It was too hard for me to read. So it's special that I'd be reading. I'd be reading one or two pages, and like the Hadith, the Quran, and I could read it. I could even sort of grasp it. But when I shut the book, I was still me, and it wasn't changing me. I thought publishing this stuff in my life, I would absorb it. And I just be the be all that great stuff you read, but it didn't happen, and it was just the same. So I realized that if you read this material, you have to not only understand it, but you have to be able to incorporate it in such a way that it's a lens through which you see everything that happens to you every day. And then, glory be to God, you know, this project began. Having grandchildren and really. I was going to do about the grandchildren, and、uh, blessed brother Sheikh Hamza, you know, he was worried about children too, and he said, you know, you really ought to do this for children. And I mentioned this to a few people. I said, Ghazali for children? Are you kidding? It's a miracle if you want to know the truth. And so I, be- I began raising funds, and I got books one through ten translated into English. The ones you see here, books one through five, are readable, right? Or one through six, and then <clears throat> the issue. And I took the manuscript of one of the parents and just sat with it for literally.、Um, that was about five years. The Book of Knowledge, because how would you take what Ghazali is saying and say it for a child? So <clears throat> I would take would circle every single. Idea, hadith or Quranic text could be used, and then just imagine whispering it to my granddaughter. You know these ideas, and then they it started coming, and then there was the difficulty of the illustrations. I mean, you have no idea publishing is hard on its own without pictures, and then so it began that way, and then the project has now gone on to be we've done books one through six, and they. With workbooks, we'll show. Maybe what I'll do is show the little video and then put the PowerPoint up.、So、I'm going to just show you a little video my son just made because it's touching. It has some of our friends talking about the project, including Abdul Hakim Winter, and then a couple of kids. So let's let's just watch that. So when you say Ghazali's Ihya Ulum Din, Ghazali's revival of the religious sciences, you really mean a synthesis. Of the first five centuries of Islamic thought, Ghazali brings together the different sciences of theology, law, ethics, scripture, and、uh, organizes them and elaborates upon his predecessors in a masterful and beautiful and accessible way. When you say Ghazali, it's really a one-stop shop、uh, for classical Islamic thought. And making that accessible for our children is uh, uh, an, a massive gift、uh, that we can impart upon them. We find that the Hujjat al-Islam, the proof of Islam, is unmistakably and uncontroversially、uh, Imam al-Ghazali, who had the uncommon、uh, divine gift of being able to、uh, encapsulate sometimes intricate. Metaphysical and ethical arguments in a form that is universally accessible. Scriptural quotations, sayings from the early Muslims, very well chosen,、uh, anthologized nuggets of, as it were, triggering catalytic wisdom. Ghazali, as a basic theme, and his great work, the revival of the religious sciences, as the、uh, the focus for our project, one of the most important literary, cultural, religious projects that one could imagine in the 21st century. Knowledge wasn't an abstract set of data and information that was、uh, imparted from parent. To, to children, to from teacher to students, but it is the way by which that knowledge impacted their very behaviour and their very being. 
reconciling this split and this divide that we have between ta'lim and tarbiya that reconnecting the knowledge with the practice reconnecting knowledge with character building reconnecting and that's what knowledge is a couple of years ago i did a little research project around the available islamic studies curriculum programs and i was really disappointed to see the the variety of issues that are challenging us today in the in the curriculum department and i am absolutely thrilled with the opportunity that avails our children today and our teachers and our parents with this Ghazali program. It is an opportunity for our children to start on the right path of belief, to start on the right path of principles, not to be raised in a, in a vacuum of spirituality, but to be raised soaking in the spirituality behind all of the very, very important rituals and acts of belief that we want to teach our children. We want to teach them how to pray and we want them to love the prayer. Let's say realize what the meaning of education is. Educare in Latin means to draw out. That's what, what is already there. It doesn't mean to pile in info. So what we're doing with education is presenting children and ourselves with the truths that are recognized and it draws out the fitra, the, the noble self that's there. And I think what the Ghazali project is trying to do is to, from children from the outset of their life, give them the self-esteem, the knowledge, the confidence of their pure, innocent, good nature. You know that. Our teaching has to really result in the outcome of a, of a person, of a believer, who is engaging in the world according to uh, sound teachings, and also someone who has the state of heart that will allow them to negotiate relationships with others and with Allah in a way that is that is truthful, that is honest, that is sincere, and that always allows for continual growth. But I never see a program like this in my in my career. I never see it. So when I saw this, I said exactly this is the kind of program that we have to have in the kindergartens and the, in the, you know, the nursery school so that they can really help the children to know exactly what they are doing. Growing up, I learned all the external things which were very fear-based and sort of tick boxes that I just had to um, implement as a Muslim, but there was no real connection to what I was doing. And I found that learning um, the religion through Imam Ghazali's work has given me that deeper meaning of the religion. We never really talk about polishing the heart. We never talk about the spirit of a person. We really focus on very external behavior as opposed to internalizing character. What the Ghazali project talks about and deals with is educating the spirit, educating the heart, educating the entire individual. It's just amazing listening to them talk about who God is and what God made and, you know, um, you know who we are and um, how we were made and, you know, who came before God and, you know, did anything come before God and what was the first thing God created and so, um, and you know, these are first graders, second graders, kindergartens and so it's really fantastic and, you know, it's, it's just, it's been an incredible journey so far and I, as head of school, I've seen, I've seen the transformation in our own curriculum and in our own outcomes are you know our kids are excited to go to class this is the foundation of 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 our curriculum here at prairie academy i'm excited to see where this journey takes prairie academy i i can only wish that i had this uh, body of work that uh, she's doing now at the time when my children were young because i don't consider myself very academic and i didn't really feel like i had the tools to really teach them really about these things. One can only just absorb it in self and try and be a role model. But I think having that body of work is so, is really, really important. I think it's, it's really going to help the next generation. Well, there's nothing like the Ghazali's Children's Project. It's unique, it's uh, groundbreaking, and it's a treasure for our children. It's personally, it's changed my dynamic and my relationship with my children. It gives 
us a language to communicate. I like the most when we were doing about the hearts and because I could learn more about shining my heart mm -hmm. and um, learn about my like what I could do and mm -hmm. how I could make myself better and help my mum and dad and I could Brilliant. make more deeds. That's really good. The reason I like Imam Al Ghazali it's really just fun. It's not like a boring, boring book. It's really fun and it teaches you stuff which you might not have known. And he teaches like stuff like how to do the wudu. The Hajj Abdullah talks about interesting topics. The children think of a lot of interesting stuff. So that's pretty much why I'm addicted to the series. But then, I, and then on my wall, if you ever come to my house, on my wall, I drew a big heart. With, on a dry erase board, I stuck it on my wall, I drew a heart. I made it golden. There's a golden, um, a dry erase marker. So now I take a black dry erase marker and I dot every time I do something bad and I erase it when I do something good or I like apologize or something. We're now right now in the place called the Gambia mm -hmm. and right like right before I went I cleaned my heart up. At first I like I know just because I wanted to clean it up. But like I actually literally cleaned my heart up. It's now completely golden. It's sitting on my room wall, completely golden. And Ghazali is really clear and really simple. His metaphors and his stories are just off the charts. So anyway, it is now uh, 457 pilot schools all over the world. And we did um, 16 workshops in South Africa. It's being taught in Bosnia. You know, you saw a little bit of Gambia. We just go ahead and. No, there's no green. We'll push. Oh. So maybe it works? No, it's not green. Oh, there. Yeah. And I have brother, my brother, Sheikh Hamza, whom I've known since he was quite young. You know, he's the co project director on this. And, uh, and we, okay, now we're getting real. All right. Now my talk starts. All right. He said we have to base the whole project on the latest critical edition that came out in 2011 from the Dar al Minhaj. This is the Ihya al referring to all of the manuscripts that are out there. And last summer, I went with Abdullah Hakim Winter's group to Bosnia. I had worked there during the war, but I came back as free, and we were able to actually go and visit the manuscripts, you know, the, the whole Ihya al that was done. The version, the write-out, six years before Imam al-Ghazali died, is in Sarajevo. Now, as I said, I've been publishing Ghazali since 1981, um, 82. But it took this, you know, to get. This is the. These are the kinds of books we've been doing. These, this is the series. The first book, uh, book one, has a DVD in it where a lot of people think, what do I do? These children are three and these p children are 16. So I did a video showing how I could teach a whole group of five-year-olds in an Islamic school, just like what I did earlier today, just telling stories and having them draw what they liked. And then, then I, also there's a section with teenagers having discussions and classes. And so these are the books and the workbooks. Uh, people weren't buying the workbooks, so after book two, we had to include the workbook and the curriculum in the hardback book. Because I don't know why people weren't buying them, but the workbook is useful, and a lot of thought went into it, and kids like it. My grandchildren like it. And also, it's, it's, it's important to have a way to rethink about the ideas. And just going right through. And that's, we have the, the, the key figure in all the stories is Hajj Abdullah meaning the man who made the pilgrimage to his heart, who is a servant of God. And he's a different nationality in each of the books. The children go to him in the magic forgotten garden, and he explains to them the answers to all of their questions. Now, these are just some of the books. All right, and this is the wonderful, we did a wonderful, we thought Ghazali deserved a beautiful life. So this is done by Demi, or the illustrations, it's utterly beautiful. Because, oops, that's my granddaughter Layla working on her workbook. And I, I, when she was just 
five sitting in the Cairo kitch kitchen color. Just, I made her draw everything that I was teaching her. I gave, I gave her the lesson which I gave to the children this morning. I, Ghazali is writing for scholars, but honestly, I took the first four or five chat books of the, of the Book of Knowledge, and I could say it in four or five sentences, which is, I said to her, did you know there are two kinds of learning? And she looks up, and I said, yeah, there's the regular everyday learning and math and eating correctly, but then there's the real special learning, and children think, real special learning? Yeah, that's how to polish your heart. What? Oh, you didn't know you have two hearts. You know, you have the regular heart, and you have the pumps the blood, and you have the real heart. Right? And then she said, Layla, but why would you have to, how does it get dirty? Oh, you know, if you don't share, if you don't help mommy. And then, exactly. And then she said, but why would you have to polish that off? Oh, you didn't know there are two worlds. And this world is really short and quick. And you're going to get lots of trials. And those are for polishing your heart. But then there's the next world. And so you've told a child in like 12, and that, that takes pages in the book to do You can do it to a five-year-old, and my five- and six-year-old, they, they understand the whole idea. They know that they are, they, ha they are golden hearts. Even if you say, go to your room, you're no good, you're naughty, they're not going to misidentify. They're going to identify with their inner dignity. And the, in the Ghazali programs, when we ask the teachers to say, when a child is something wrong, they say, that's beneath my dignity, to always remind themselves that, that they are dignified, that how important they are. And so, so children then, with this particular idea, they understand that they have dignity, that they are pure, that they are going to be sent difficulties to polish this beautiful heart, and that there is no death. Well, then children have it all. They have the plan of life. They know who they are, and they know that it's all fine. And then, oh, the, the, book, the books have, you know, cartoons and things and comic books for the children. And then there's a curriculum. This is, we, have a, we have a website, which is a really amazing website. Oh, there you are. It is, there you are. Yes, one of our great schools, you know, with some of the things. I'm just showing you. And this is like just children always, it's always good if they can draw whatever it is. And the other, this is talks I was giving in England, you know. There we are at, the, at your academy. This is when they, the, all the teachers would come here and they would help with the curriculum which is wonderful. And we use it in camps. This is in Indonesia. I gave talks on it in Jakarta. And this is a little Indonesian girl. The kids like to draw their hearts. This is in uh, Rabat at the uh, Rabata of Muhammadiyah. These little children, they created an echo game that we put on the children's website. And oh, this is uh, Hams uh, Kat Stevens' daughter, Yusuf Islam's daughter at the Islamia schools. This is just showing showing you. And this is what the website looks like. The, you have a heart crossing, crossing the screen, and then when things happen, like backbiting, it brushes it off right away. And then the website has things to do, the three selves, stories of Ghazali. This is if you want your children to have fun, their things to download, their core teaching films, t summing up everything that's been going on. Uh, there are uh, books that can be uh, flip books. They can go and look a flip book library. And um, more and more downloads. That's beneath my dignity. These are just wonderful things that we ask the community to send in ideas and things so that we can post them all for people to use. And of course, this is the one we were showing a little bit earlier, which is the one, I don't know whether they'd want to see it. But what, one of the things we've discovered there are two key elements to that work. One is the heart and keeping drawing it and writing on it and working with your heart. But the other is play acting. And I discovered that, for example, my grandchildren weren't sharing one day. And, and I said, D share. Do you know how that sounds? Share? It sounds like eat spinach or go to your room. If your mother's saying it's got to have a bad part to it, right? It's got to, the fun is, so I just said, play, not sharing. Oh, you can't have my this, you can't hold my truck, it went on, and they're laughing and laughing. 
or, and then in the end, I said, now share. And they're looking puzzled, right? Would you, would you like to hold my truck? Would you like to have a cookie? And then they experience, oh, it feels great, because it's from a different, different self now. It feels great. Um, I'm not losing anything by it, and it's, and it's easy. So they experienced it. And then the other day, my granddaughter, a guest came, and she, I said, shake hands. She went over and did, held the hand like this and looked down. I said, oh, wait a minute here. Yes, do the wrong horrible handshake with the guest. I said, now turn around firm handshake looking in the eye. And now she does it every time because she knows what it is and she's experienced it. So it came up to the idea that when we're dealing with the 10 things Ghazali says you can never do, backbiting, pride, all the rest, that the trick is to get the children to act it out. So all over the world they act out doing the wrong thing and they say, what did we just do? Let's correct that, let it get it right. So these videos come in from all over the world and you know, kids' videos are hilarious. You know, they're just so funny you can't stand it. But that is my main teaching method, acting out. The Ghazali stories in the children's books, I sometimes make them act, act them out. You know, because the, the, the story about, uh, well, you all weren't here for the children's project. Help the story, then they remember it. You know, and also they felt it and they've experienced what the point is. So I think, uh, Using that, that project is very good. And in the last uh, class when I was speaking to the children, Ghazali says that when you have a good thought, it's from angels. So um, act on it immediately because the waswisu comes in right away. So uh, Homera, we've come up with an amazing activity for this one, all right? What you do is you have a child stand and say a great thought. Help mommy, and then the other one gets to be the waswisu go watch TV, you know. So then, because they're aware of their true self and the lower, lower self coming in, the good thought. And then after they play this, and of course it's hilarious, you get them to do their own, give your good thought, and then give your own thought that you're, why you're not gonna do it. And suddenly, if you can get them going this at a young age, they, are, they will start to watch them do this their whole lives. I'm, I'm kind of on alert for good thoughts because I was telling them I had a friend in England, a very older friend, Gay Eaton, and I kept having the thought every day, call him, call him, and I put it off, and oh, it's five hours ahead, and then he died. Where are those thoughts coming, these angelic? You're driving, I should go see so-and-so at the nursing home. Oh, somebody would like this. Oh, just act on it right away. And so I'm starting to learn this myself. I suddenly realized, that's a good thought. I've had it three times now, three times. What's going on here? It means do it, you know. But this is a good way. The whole thing is becoming conscious of our inner lives and our lower thoughts and things like that. And so anyway, these, these uh, videos are hilarious, and you can either see them online or we can show you some of them. And we invite children to do it. And uh, these, this, I'm just showing you a little bit of the website. There's a children's section, and then there's adult resource section and teacher section. And this is the advisory committee, some of it, where that is the man on the left, Mustafa Abu Sway. He's a Ghazali scholar, and he is the imam at Masjid al-Aqsa in, in Al-Quds. And then that is Timothy Giannati, the Muslim who prepared, along with uh, Imam um, Zayed, the entire Muhammad Ali event, which was so amazing. And, you know, Hamza and Ingrid and all these blessed people are, you know, because I'm not a scholar, so all this stuff has to be checked and, you know, checked by people. These are just some of the people, you know. And I'm just running through some of the stuff on the website. Videos. Well, this is it. This is a child who just draw her two hearts. Look. Look, see the two hearts? The real heart and then the one that's pumping blood. See? And these are children's drawings. They're, the children's drawings are the best. This is observing my heart. Right, this girl is drawing her heart and she's going to put her dots in it. Look at the stuff the kids put on their hearts. It's just becoming conscious, you know, of all this. This is from the Clara Muhammad School, set up by um, 
Warthadin, you know, the, uh, the, the son of, I can't remember his name, but you know. This little boy was in Jeddah, and uh, I said, uh, put some dots on your heart. And then I said, what are they? He said, this is for being noisy in the movies. And his mother was standing there, and she thought, he knows what he's doing. I've said it a thousand times to be quiet. Just drawing hearts. And this is in the workbook where they get to, to, to actually work on different aspects. This is a Cherokee story that they love about the two wolves. This is about the gossiping story. And I was telling the children earlier that I rewrote uh, gossiping 22 times, that chapter, and couldn't decide to put in whether or not that the Quran says it's the same as eating a person's dead flesh. And I decided I'm going for it. And kids can take it. And the very night I finished it, I went out with some ladies, and they were talking about somebody's father. And I had a really hilarious, awful, hilarious story, and I told it, knowing, getting it. And on the way coming home, I felt sick at my stomach, and I threw up. And that's how I knew it wasn't a metaphor. And it was confirmed for me when we did the Book of Fasting, when I did this, this Book of Fasting. There's a hadith in there in which uh, so a woman or some ladies came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they said, we're old and frail, and we have to actually not fast. Can you let us off? And he said, take this bowl and throw up in it. And to the horror of the onlookers, blood and flesh came out. He said, you already broke your fast. You gossiped. And that's what, what Ghazali takes us into. Fasting is not just from food and water. It's from listening to bad things, saying bad things, taking our feet bad places. So it's just like wudu. It has to be conscious. And I think, you know, this is so extraordinary because if you, for one month, when you're doing Ramadan, really were on guard on what the limbs do, you might get in the habit of being more aware and stopping yourself. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to listen to that. And um, we have a friend um, who is just, she and her daughter have just written a book. Well, like, she called me up one day and said she was talking at a ladies' party. And her daughter whispered in her ear, uh, are, are you backbiting, Mom? And I said, may I speak to the daughter? And the little girl caught on, and she said, Auntie, until we did the chapter on backbiting, I had never heard of backbiting before. And I thought, yeah, my mother mentioned it like once a month. Nothing just good thing. But why isn't it said three times a day? because it's the worst thing you can do. And look what's become of the world and of all this, uh, the communities and the faith communities from talking bad about everyone and everyone in it. You know, It's frightening how bad it is. So like when I saw that hadith, I realized I don't even, if I start to join in something, I see it right away. And it's something that just simply can't be done. You know, it's totally like over. You know, that's in the workbook where they draw it. And then I told the children the stories today about this is an ant activity we have uh, of understanding that when something goes wrong or is unexpected, you have to trust the law. These are just things we're doing. We have a, a Sunday school with children. And this is, these are just other stories. I don't want to take too much time of yours, you know. But, and this is interesting. You'll see the Urdu version, the lion story. Ghazali says, if a lion jumped out and tried to kill you and somebody saved you, would you thank the person that tried to save you? You would, wouldn't you? Imagine a teacher is trying to teach you what we're talking about today. That's really saving you. Do you thank that teacher? You know? There's Layla drawing the lion. And then, oh, this is beautiful. These are children's drawings. There's a hadith that the good teacher, we are all teachers, uh, the angel's wing stroke them, and the fish in the sea, the whales and the ants pray for them. Isn't that a great drawing? Like, that's so wonderful. That's how important it is to be a good teacher. And this is the, the teacher teaching them, teaching the children. And this is the wudu story, which I told the children earlier that, um, that this old man came to the scholar and said, what is wudu? And the scholar kept saying, how could you 
and to not, not know what wudu is. So the scholar showed him how to do it, and then he got it all wrong. And the scholar here is saying, get out, you know, bara, just get out completely. And then the bawab of the scholar goes and comes back and says to the scholar, no, the old man that you threw out, he's actually the spiritual teacher of the village. And so the scholar goes and kneels before him and says, what is wudu? And he says, when you're rinsing your hands, beg forgiveness for what you've been done, been doing, and ask a lot to guide you in what you do. And you forgiveness, think about what you've said that day, and then ask that you only say good things. Wash your feet. May they only take me to good places. I now do this. I don't know how else to do do anymore. But it's like that auntie. I'd gotten my woo-doo down to around 30 seconds. It was so cute, you know. So, I mean, and then, of course, about purification, uh, Ghazali says, imagine you've invited a king to your home, yani Allah, and you pop the front door and you leave garbage on the inside. So we, our purification, clean at night and looking great and doing the right thing on the outside. It has to be the state of our heart. These just other wonderful stories. This is the Ghazali talking to the children. Is it, that's, that's the wonderful book. Their school turned this book into a play. And these are some of the illustrations of it. I, I'm, we don't have to take the time. It's from Marvels of the Heart. Oh, just some wonderful Chinese. This is presenting the project in Jakarta. And then uh, the Moroccans did a wonderful festival in honor of Fons Vitae, saying that we have preserved the Islamic spir uh, spiritual literary her heritage in English for the West. And so they did a big event, and all of our books were there, and they did music and festivals, and the Ghazali thing was presented. And also at Bradford, they had a literary festival, bookstores. It's wor wonderful to have it in Bosnia now. This is the letter from Azhar asking to do it, you know, for their students. This is an Arabic version done by King Faisal's granddaughter, Maho Faisal. And then this is the wonderful woman and her mother. This is uh, Sarah. This is Lubna Sarah. She's been putting the whole, the whole series into um, to Urdu. Look at the drawings. Look at that. It's better than that. Look. I mean, wow, I feel like getting hers back and redoing ours, you know? It's just wonderful. Just beautiful. See, that's the, her lion version, much better than ours. But the thought that this is in Pakistan, we've got five different groups in Pakistan, and Imran Khan just ordered the whole set to look at. So it's uh, what I didn't expect was for this thing to catch on that's just such a nice story. That it could you, if you had needs, go to the king or the president of your country or CEO with your needs? No. But Allah is always sitting there dying to hear your needs if you'll just pray. And these illustrations were done, sent by a man I've never met who lives in Slovakia named Milan Spak. And this is where a, it says that if you call the Adan in the wilderness, all the angels come. Yeah, and this is how still your Ali tells you that when you're praying, that one thing we worry about is not being able to keep our attention. Your mind wanders, and Ghazali gives recommendations for everything. He said, in the takbir, bring yourself into standing before Allah, being present before him. And at that moment, hold on to it. And maybe it'll last two or three seconds, but then maybe it'll be eight seconds. And you keep using it and using the takbir to get back. And um, what Ghazali says in the book of prayer is, is that we don't want our prayer to be just gestures. And this is really, I thought, I'll never be able to do this. Kids will never be able to do this. But it's great to try, right? What he says is, for each thing, each, each ayah, each position, there's a state of a way to be. So if you're saying, subhanAllah, don't just say, subhanAllah, 
right? Be in a state of awe of your Lord. And if you're saying, Edina Serata, be, be contrite, you know, guide me. Don't just as fast as you can. So I thought, how can anyone do this? Well, just try it. You just go along slowly, and all of a sudden you're in this space with infinite. You know, it's fun. And we want it to be fun and glorious and sacred, you know. And then the mysteries of charity. And this is, this is the, and I, I feel as though I'm repeating myself all the time, but this, this chapter, uh, this changed my life. This is the last one. When I went to do zakat, I thought zakat, you know, two and a half percent, a mudda of grain, a camel, you know, in the zakat thing. All of a sudden, it was like, are you kidding? So the story, because the reason this Ghazali material has helped me personally so much is because I made it into children's stories. And there's nothing like a story. Metaphysical, theological, principial. It is, but it's simple and usable. So this is the chapter that changed my life, right? The, the book. So it starts with the children. They're at the merry-go-round. And uh, they notice some children who are looking longingly. They can't go because they don't have the wherewithal. They're, in fact, their sh clothes are a little shabby. And then the children, my group of children that are in all the storybooks, uh, they are running to Hajj Abdullah in the secret forgotten garden to talk to him for their lesson that day. And then a man is reaching out saying, Lila, Lila. And they run into the, they run into, they, oh, this is, skip that. Then they run into Hajj Abdullah and they say, why are some people rich and some people poor? And he said, sit down. First, that man who's saying, Lila, take him some change, right? You don't disappoint someone who reaches out. And Li means Li for the sake of God, but Li means it already belongs to God. Inna lillahi, surely we belong to God, right? And everything belongs to God, everything. And then... He said, everything we have and are is on loan. That means the skills I have, my connections, my energy, my persistence, my parents, I didn't give myself any of these things. None of you gave anything you are or have. And they are not ours. They belong to Allah. And they are totally on loan. And they are totally an amana. So then... In order to make that clear, Ghazali tells two amazing stories. Let me see if I can get to, okay? There's a king, and the king says to this man here, I'm calling Abdullah, to whom he's given lands, he raises fruit and vegetables and meat and animals. And the king says to him, take from the food and give to the poor people in the town. Now this man, <coughs> obviously, his, fam he's been, his family has been farming it for years. He thinks it's his. Like often when I give charity, I think I'm giving from what is mine, right? I mean, I've forgotten that it's not mine, right? We have all forgotten it's not ours. And so this man thinks the, the food and everything is his, so he goes and he holds it up high and the people have to reach up and they feel less, they feel lower reaching up for the food. And by the way, this story and the next story, I have my grandchildren act out. I have the grandchildren act out all the stories. So they're left feeling, oh, we have the food. Do we owe him something? Are we beholden? Okay, cut to. Uh, and he's raised by a family who teach him money. And the king says, take gold to the old widow. She needs money to educate her children. And he goes and he says, this will make you cry. Oh, lady, I beg you to receive what I bring on behalf of the king, right? In order that I may fulfill my loan, my trust to God. Well, there it is. That's the whole thing. We don't, we're not. See, I've had a long, how do we know we should be humble? How do we know we should be anonymous and give 
because we're nobody. What we have and what we are isn't ours. And God sends us all the, the ways we're supposed to give it back. So there's just this incredible bearing witness to la ilaha illallah. And yet we're all by to I did it, I wrote it, I am, I this, but it's not true. But on, I, my whole life changed, you know. How could it not, you know. Well, this is just talking about giving anonymously and ways not to give. These are just the children in the end run back to the merry-go-round with their children. Testing and children learn patience and all that kind of stuff. But what was really quite nice, I went to the local Louisville mosque, and they have a way for children to come in the last 10 days of Ramadan and bring sleeping bags and be quiet and have some lessons. Maybe they start out with spending one day there. And I thought, why should we leave this for adults? Why don't we let our children start get, getting to do this too? It would be a joy and fun and grown up to get to do a retreat, learn to be quiet, to learn to spend the day alone and reading and so on. Why not like click that in as an idea? So that's the end. So um, the project is um, as it is. And I'm ready to answer any questions. And it's been finished for 10 and a half months. And I'm exhausted. And for 10 years, I didn't make my bed or watch sports with my husband or anything. And I've had a, a year now recovering. And then I'm going to do the book on Hodge for children. And you say, why Hodge up for kids, right? Well, not only do they see, hear about it, and they see family going, but we've had uh, Mubin's family. Mubin, they went on Hajj with his, grand, with his mother, the grandmother, and the two children. One was old enough. But what I learned from Ghazali's book on Hajj, and I've done two Hajjs years ago, now I have to do a real Hajj, is it wasn't what I thought. Ghazali begins by this. When you're getting in your vehicle to leave Mech, Jeddah or wherever to go, right? Consider that vehicle. For him, it was a camel or a cart or whatever. For us, it's a car. Pretend, not pretend, understand this vehicle is like a board. That's the beer. They carry your body on it, the grave. So it's death. You're leaving all behind. And when you're arriving and you see through the, through the columns, you see the Kaaba and you know that the angels are making tawaf around the throne above. And know that there are people who have really struggled to get there. They've come from Indonesia carrying food or walked from Mauritania or whatever. And you've come in on a plane. He didn't say this, but I'm transposing it. He said, know that you are on the coattails with the, the angels. You're, not, you're following that through one of these humble people who's made all this effort. And then when you go to the Kiswa, just imagine that it's, it's like the robes of Allah, and you cling to the Kiswa and beg his mercy. I did this on a number, by the way, and it was like, are you kidding? This was just amazing. You know? So the important thing is I'm going to Umrah, inshallah, in February for my birthday, and I'm going to get photographs from down up, kids, the way a kid would see the Kaaba and see people walking by. You know, and have them under, I mean, children are now aware there is death, there is the next world. This is a practice session. At Baj, when you see, I remember at Musdalifa and Arafat, as far as the eye could see, people dressed in their grave clothes. And what have they brought? Not their rank or anything but their deeds in their hearts. So it's, they're getting a preview of the Yom al -Qiyama. Can you imagine? a faith in which you can get a preview of the Last Judgment, I mean, with your eyes, I mean, physically. So it's a huge thing. And I know uh, my brother Hamza Yusuf wrote an incredible thing about how the Quran is about death. And this life is really quick, you know. I mean, I have watched my last 50 years go in one second. I read about it, I read the poetry about it. You know, Omar Khayyam, life is like the snow upon the desert's breast. It's faster. And I didn't, I knew it intellectually, but now uh, it has been demonstrated, you know. And so, you know, this is real. 
So I think it's wonderful to bring our children on board from the beginning of their lives, being handed the whole package, clear about everything, and really the idea of having uh, the inner sunnah developed is so important. Tarbiya is really very, very important. If you want to just like enjoy it or simply go to the children's website, zalichildren.org, click on things to do, and you can see all these hilarious videos. There was a girl from Sialkot, Pakistan. Do you know where Sialkot is? I don't. She's wearing a little pink dress. She has a pet goat, a zarebi with long ears, and a pet peacock. And she, yeah, she has her dolls, her Barbie dolls. She walks them to a, a tea party, and when they go to get in their doll car, they backbite the woman who served the food, right? And then when they realize, she takes them back and they apologize. And she ends by standing next to her goat and her peacock and saying, do you think my goat would backbite? I mean, so cute. Then there's one where two girls, this is about lying, um, they're doing cartwheels. See if I can do 200 cartwheels. And the little, little brother's sitting on the couch. And then one of them knocks over and breaks the mother's best vase. And she says to her sister, we'll tell mother he did it. And then this voice is the mother. Mother said, who broke my vase? And then they say, he did. And he's, no. And then in the end, you have the two girls going. And they say to the mother, we're sorry. We broke it. You know, we're, you know. But you see them acting out greed, acting out all the And by acting these out, and if you could just get this wonderful school here, right, to join in and get these kids to make these hilarious homemade videos, it would and and contribute them, and then we can send them out internationally to all of our pilot schools. There's the Hub Club in London, that's I mean in 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 Solihull, England, which is a total Ghazali school, you know, completely. And there's a film on 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 my, you know, that we can send you their whole school and what they're doing. So what we really are looking forward to is many Muslims don't understand this project, or they are afraid of Al Ghazali, or there's thousands of things. But it's, it's, if you as a community find there's value in this and can work with me, I'm getting tired and old, you know, but it would be great if you will contribute and contrib be in touch with us, contribute to the website, let us know how things are going, let children talk about what they're doing, send us their art, you know, so that we can have more and more to send out on the Fonz Vita. Well, or our Facebook page and there's my son posts stuff continuously so then maybe perhaps we can just work as as an as a family